For exclusive and early access to content by Dr. ER TV, visit www.dr.er.tv. The nurse wants to watch too. So for the purpose of the video, patient has a history of non-alcoholic liver cirrhosis that leads to fluid retention. He's had previous paracentesis, which is a procedure we're gonna do now. Uh, we'll put a needle into this fluid called ascites, and we get it drained. He's had high volume paracentesis, more than 14, 15 liters? 15 has been the, the, the most. The most. Now he's already received through the IV, a dose of albumin, a 50 gram bottle. And the reason we do that, because we wanna make the blood nice and thick so that once we remove this fluid, the body's not gonna try to remake all the fluid and then he can become hypertensive, tachycardic and become sick. So by making his blood thicker with more protein, then it stays in the intravascular space. Um, we already performed an ultrasound showing that this area here has a large pocket of fluid. You wanna pick the lowest area so that when the catheter enters and it lays down, you're able to catch most of the fluid because initially we're going to get plenty of fluids no matter where we go. But uh, you want to make sure you catch the most in the as he lays down into the uh, back part of his abdomen, the retroperitoneum potentially. Uh, the other thing that I want to consider is this here. He's got a lot of redness, and you can't see much of that, but a lot of pinkage. And that concerns him for an early abdominal wall cellulitis. So we're going to give him some antibiotics and send him home on antibiotics as well. We are not really considered that the patient has any kind of intra-abdominal infection. He doesn't have a fever or a Y count. Uh, with people like yourself with bad ascites, you can get something called spontaneous bacterial peritonitis in which you can have a spontaneous infection of the fluid. Okay. All of a sudden you have belly pain, fever, chills, and when we do the puncture, the fluid comes out cloudy or dark. One time when I did it, it came out looking like Coca-Cola, that dark. Okay. And the patient had a perforated bowel, had to go to the operating room, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, like I said before, we already identified the spot. So now we're just gonna. Doctor, she can come in. Are you, you're not gonna get dizzy or anything. You stay on that side over there. No. Oh, that's just my mom. Oh, good. Just your mom. Just yeah. my mom. Doctor Glasser, fifteen. Which kit would you want? Come back outside. No, no, you don't need to come out. Okay. 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 Well, the, the, the toughest part today was getting this kit that we needed. The actual yeah. procedure is easy. Yeah, I could just about do the, the procedure myself. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, you can aim at any <laughs> spot. And... I'll just be glad for me. Do you guys do the liver shunt here? Do no. You, know, you don't twist around? Do you have to go to this room? I, I don't, don't know. Yeah, I don't know where they go. Um, I'll That's something to talk to, to Tiara. Either, either one of Rome's hospitals right that now. Oh. They are not. All right. Pinch a number. Just get a little flare of light. Okay. Pull in jack, pull in jack. I don't know if you know, ma'am, that's why I asked you to move up. We're doing a recording for an educational video. Oh, okay. And you know if you want it to be on. No, I definitely don't need to be there. <laughs> I hate my picture to be there. <laughs> so the good news is, I mean, you, 
you know what I'm doing, so I don't have yeah. to explain everything, but I will for the purpose of the video. So, this is the main thing. It has the metal and it's covered by a plastic catheter. Some of them are actually longer than this. This is kind of a short one, but it worked just fine. And uh, some people first nick the skin. I don't find that there's any need to do that. This is sharp enough to get through. As you enter the skin, you pull on the plunger until you get the fluid. And if you're doing for diagnostic purposes, then you save the first amount for sending out to a lab. If you're doing for therapeutic purposes like him, then you don't need to save it. But so we go in and we start pulling back. Adjust the pressure. And there it is. So we go a little in. And then we introduce the rest. The fluid is nice and clear. Maybe a tiny little bit cloud, but certainly not thick. Go ahead and go to the suction site and hook it up to the suction wire. Actually, you don't need to. No, you need to connect the suction, start it on. So, this is just like an IV cat, it hooks up here. This goes to the nurse to hooks up to the suction. You don't need that one, because this will go straight into that. Yep, sorry. That's okay. And then when we hook it up, Just, I guess it'll be, and then it starts going up. This will be better for me to put my arm down. Wow. In, uh, you can put it like in front of you, just don't touch the blue area. And then one thing we do to prevent that from moving and losing it is we take the sticker and we stick it in. Now that kind of kinks it a little bit, so so it might slow it down. So I sometimes do that. <laughs> Yeah, there's quite a bit, I know that's not my skin. Normally it's, um, it drains a lot. It drains pretty quick when they suction it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the procedure. Now it's a matter of changing bucket after bucket until we remove as much as possible. We'll see how his belly is going to change and come down as time goes on. Already changing the can, so I turn the suction off and then clamp it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Clamp it. Yeah. And then change and. Heard those things will can mess you up. Usually, they, they just put uh, one of the IV um, bandages over. Yeah. I don't have one of those, so. And then in a day. Uh, tomorrow evening when I take it, well, you pull it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it off. If you want to hold that one there for me. Yeah. That's quite something. New, new record. Well, I'm sure. That's what, 19 liters?